I would probably say that Xbox Live and, and One Layer Down Marketplace has been everything we ever imagined and more. We're now at 10 million downloads. People downloading stuff, videos, trailers, gamer cards. Um, the ability now for us to interact with that consumer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, provide them content at its core gaming content, but also bring them together with their friends. Gamer achievements is huge. Achievements is unbelievable. I mean, I love reading the forums and going on the boards and people see something on somebody else's, but how the hell did he get that? And, and it's driving this, again, I'll use that old word, stickiness of I want to be able to play longer and, and dive into games because it, it's very important to me when people go look at my achievements that I'm up there with my buddies you know, all around the world. Um, marketplace in particular, um, and the ability again for us to be able to interact, as I say, has been, been just phenomenal because we're not only providing gamer content, but now we can provide video. Uh, we're delivering a high definition connection to a 14 to 34 year old male that is not watching television anymore. And I would be remiss, of course, if I didn't talk about Arcade. And Arcade is, is both an incredibly unique business model that is allowing smaller developers to get their content up in front of millions of people, as well as, I think, an incredible broadening tool for us that, that we feel very proud about, that we're able now to give, if you're not the, the, the FPS or the RPG guy, but you just want to go and play and play simple games that you can you, ultimately, you think you put down after 15 minutes, and in reality, you can't. Uh, Geo Wars being the one that everybody calls out right now. Um, and I think Arcade has been right there with Marketplace overall as being the two things that I think have moved this business forward. We, we committed in 2003 as an executive team, we're going to launch globally. We're going to break the paradigm that is this thing that it takes you a year and a half in some instances to roll out a console because you've got to do all the localization. You've got to get software ready uh, for the team. And we're going to break that paradigm So, so because why should Europe wait six months? Or, or if you're a Japanese console manufacturer, why should Europe wait 12 months or 15 months? And why should the US wait six months? If you do your job and you work with your developers and your publishers and, and focus on getting that platform delivered, you can do it globally. As regards Japan, it becomes, if you don't put the hardware in there, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that you'll never gain traction in the marketplace. Was well, it worth the risk that we might have few tens of thousands left over, absolutely. Would I do the same thing again? Of course, because if I, if I constrain supply, then, then what good am I doing? You have to gamble that by making the hardware available and making the content available that you're going to get traction, whether that happens on day one or two years after launch. And, and, and showing any lack of commitment to that market by telling retailers, no, we're only going to ship n hundreds of thousands of dollars in, uh, of units in there would actually backfire on us. We made the commitment to what the number would be in Japan a long time in advance. We made the commitment to the US and to the Europeans what the number would be. Our commitment to retail here was, was made pretty early in advance, and it's unfortunate demand continues to outstrip supply. The phenomenon that's happened is that I think we're pretty much through, I hope, the pre-order situation. But, but post November 22nd, people kept coming in and saying, here's my deposit and here's my phone number. And I, I know I'm not going to get it for Christmas, but I really want it for January or February. And so what we've been seeing is, as I mentioned earlier, is you know, you've, you've got a, arrives at a local store and they actually pick up the phone and call people. We're about to get over that hump and that you'll be able to walk into your store and see them there. Now, they're going to go quickly again, so don't dawdle. But there's going to be supply at retail. It's been unfortunate that demand has been that re the, the store managers couldn't put them out on the floor they were continuing to take phone numbers and deposits and, and, and picking up the phone and calling your Xbox 360s in. So consumers who didn't lay down a deposit or, or, or make a commitment with a retailer have been in vain, in most instances, searching for one. I really truly believe that's going to change in the next few weeks. So getting Microsoft points up uh, is phenomenal. I mean, not easy to develop a virtual online currency, um, and, but that's moving. That then actually, will, you'll start to see this in the future spread across other Microsoft platforms. So you do have this virtual currency that will allow you not only to interact in our world of Xbox, but other worlds as well. Um, and you're right, it gives you the, the, the perfect platform to be able to do microtransactions. Stored value cards is something as we need to look at as well, particularly for the Asian market. But the key is going to be, you know, A, can you bring it to the console? B, can you find ways of, again, going back to my original point of, again, making it specific to a device, but making it more agnostic? I will say when we, we made an announcement last week about a game that I'm phenomenal, which will be my new cameo, Rob, 
uh, Viva Pinata from Rare, a game that I've watched for the last two years being developed. Um, and our announcement is just the tip of the iceberg of what I think is the brilliance of not only a game, but a piece of intellectual property that we'll get behind in ways we've never done as a company before, in building the IP, where the game will be integral to that, um, but we'll use online and we'll use Xbox Live as a fascinating way for people to interact. Now, it's not an MMO per se, but it's going to bring, hopefully, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people together to interact in ways that come into my garden, let's trade characters, let's go into the, let's go to Pinata Island and look at what's going on in, in your garden. Is there a special character? Can we raise these? Can you sell me that, that giraffe so I can do Fascinating ways that are as appealing to an eight-year-old as they are to an 80-year-old, utilizing live and, like I say, theoretically building, um, not the classic MMO you would think, but a very different way and allow younger consumers to be able to get involved in that space and maybe cut their teeth in a game like Pinata, in which they feel more comfortable than moving up to maybe even more challenging experiences.